Hey y'all, it's Christine. You probably hear my kids and my hubby in the background as they're wrapping their day up, preparing for bedtime. You know, they want to run around, jump up and down, scream, and let the last lick of that energy out before rest. <laughs> So don't mind the background noise. I want to show you honing into home here. And some of y'all are not on um, my subscription list, nor are you Facebook friends with us. So sometimes I choose to read the posts that I put out so that you could glean from what the Lord's done in and through this wretch right here. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, I wrote a letter to a mother about the important work. And this was a Facebook post that I turned into a blog post because I thought, you know what? It can reach more people than just my friends list. And I think mothers everywhere would agree what's written here. So let's dig in. Mother, let's discuss the quote unquote important work your position holds. I pray your heart is touched to the core to where the virtues written about here and the very essence of who you are become one. And may the blessing which blessings which follow also be yours, as stated in Proverbs 31 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. One of my favorite things is picking photos for the blogs. And I caught this one with my husband praising God at church during worship. Mentor and disciple your children. It is seemingly a lost art in the Christian home, but not for Jews or Muslims, for they get this right and drill their beliefs deep into the well of their children's soul. Yet it is without the Messiah. Hence, should not the redeemed of the Lord be leading with this way of life? And if so, what would that influential life look like with the role of mother? In response to that significant question, I have gathered a few thoughts of my own, which I chose to write about in this particular letter. Here's a photo of my three youngest reading and chilling out by the big bay window in our living room one homeschool day. And remember, I have an almost 21 year old. I've learned a lot of lessons, made tons of mistakes. And hence, I have repented and found the new abundant life that God gave us and and, and died at that to, to give us. So we could glide with that gentle rhythm, which oneness and relationship by spending quantity time together breeds, not just quality time. Because in my personal opinion, you cannot always plan for quality time. I feel like it's birthed out of quantity time. And I have blog posts on that as well. Check out Honing Into Home. In order to do this great work, first be taught by the Holy Spirit of God yourself as to then be able to teach your children his commands. Prepare this generation for how to maneuver spiritually throughout the landmines of this world and train them for the kingdom. So when the new millennial reign begins, they will know the ropes. We're at the end of the age of grace, y'all. I'm not prophesying any longer, but be looking up because Jesus Yahushua is coming and quickly. For this is not our home. We are only deployed here for a time to learn more of our Heavenly Father and lead others to do the same through Christ Jesus Yahushua. Get in the zone. Time is short. Focus, parents. The children need for you to show them the way from here. The lost are dying. The sick are crying out. and Those captive are waiting for release. Your children just may be the vessel who brings them their Savior. Impart wisdom and knowledge to them by modeling what is right and how to live for God most high. 
teach them his word, pray for them and with them. Speak promises of his blessings over them by name. Proclaim verses of scripture for each child, young or old. Anoint them with oil. Show grace and kindness to yourself and them when there's sin. Yet confess those sins and lead by example with repentance. Then receive Jesus' forgiveness for all parties. Walk in mercy and the truth of God's word. Serve him wholeheartedly with joy and thanksgiving so the children would want to emanate you. Be charitable and hospitable with all people and things. Remain humble and continue to stand firm in the faith during times of trouble. Here's a picture of the twins. God multiplied my womb because of his great name sake not because of who I am and who I am like when he talks about the Israelites it's like you're stiff necked people it's not because of who you are it's because of my great mercy and my love and my namesake that I did this for you and like I said I have really wrecked um my life and and it, it's by his redemption power um that it's been restored and 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 truly by his spirit uh, working within me alone, uh, because I, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, pull the 180 that he did to, um, transform myself. That's another story and <laughs> message though. I just wanted to continue to share that so that you know that whatever is exuded through me is because of the hard knock life and not because I have it all together, but because I have acquired knowledge and, and wisdom and understanding from falling often and a lot and his sweet, gentle presence being there to pick me up and teach me and guide me, instruct me and direct me along the way. So your entire life, mom and dad, is a sounding board for your sons and daughters. They will hear you best with their eyes. So be vigilant in the fight against the evil one with your spiritual weapons of warfare, explained in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, Ephesians 6, Psalms 18, and 91. Be slow to become angry by letting the Lord quiet you with his love. Remember whose you are so you can remind your offspring whose they are as well. Bring encouragement, affection, and praise to the table every day. Cry out to Jesus and let them see the humility it takes to trust your Savior. Likewise, lift his name on high in the times when you need only to be still and know that he is fighting the battles for you because Christ intercedes for us. Smile and focus your full attention on their faces while they are talking to you and cuddle with your children a lot. Let them climb into your lap or lay down to snuggle with you while watching a movie. Leave them notes to tell them how proud you are of them for who they are and not just what they have accomplished. Love their fathers well with respect and honor for being the head of your household. Walk slowly and hold their hands in pu- out in public. Love and enjoy your days by capturing each moment in your heart like the collection of memories which add up to one huge offering unto God. Sacrifice time, money, and energy often and let go of any distractions which, det- which deter you from them being well spent. I can hear my husband teaching the children hymns inside. This is the lake by us and can't really see it well here, but um, they love that spot as do I. We find refreshing in the sunlight and by the water and out in the air, which is rejuvenating there. In wrapping up, aim to be a good steward and recognize how communing with Abba and those he gave you in this life is the best use of your days. Walk in integrity. And Christine, read this over and over again until your very nature reflects every single word from this letter. Reader, if you have read this far, I meant to tell you earlier. This message was addressed to me, but I hope it has helped you to see what is most important as well.